Spicy Dot says, I just recently saw you a 2023 build guide with everything you need. They're from 10 months ago. Is there not a 2024 version dropping? So no, that 2023 guide is up to date. I actually was just thinking I should just remove the date from it or change it. If I, see, the thing is, it's still 100% up to date, even though it's like 10 months old. Because like in the beginner world, shit doesn't change that fast. Like no, like it's made for beta like four point five. It's it's good to go. So, um, so like, should we should we update it even though nothing has changed just to put a new date on it? No, we just keep keep selling it, right? Um, and I thought maybe I should just change the date to twenty twenty four, but then people would think it was a new guide and and maybe be misled, and I don't want that. Uh, no, it's fine. We have no plans to update it until there is a compelling reason to do so. How common is Vortex ring state in FPV drones? Ecalc warns me about it whenever I put a high pitch propeller. Um, I, I think that Vortex ring state might relate in some ways to the prop wash oscillation that you get when you descend straight down. But... My understanding is that vortex ring state is a much bigger deal with larger props and that it is a, a, a almost negligible. Like the idea, like with a, with a big helicopter, if you get into a vortex ring state, then the helicopter just falls out of the air. And it's like, if you don't correctly respond, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to, I believe, pitch forward and fly out of it. If you don't correctly respond, then you're, you're out, you know, you're going to crash. Uh, you know, with a, with a FPV drone... I've never seen one that you you know couldn't just power out of a descent no matter what. Maybe it's because they have such insane power to weight ratio, you know. So I wouldn't worry about vortex ring state on FPV drones unless you're flying very big ones. But yeah, you just pitch forward and fly out of it. I believe is what you're supposed to do. That's a good thing to do because prop wash oscillation makes your footage look like shit. So. You know, it's even if it's not going to like literally crash you into the ground. What's your opinion on the Lumineer 2407 motors? Are they any good? Yeah, they're okay. Um, they're okay motors. Lumineer Zip 2407. Here we go. Let me find a product page. So the thing is, out of stock. Although in stock it, yeah. Um, the thing is, you know, like it's a $26 motor and I'm not sure I feel like it's like, a. am not sure. I think maybe you can do better for $26. Like, for example, do you see here? They don't have single strand windings, right? That's a cost saving measure. Um, it's not a Unibel. That's a cost-saving measure. Um, it's not a bad motor. I think probably you can do better for, for $25, $26, though. Um, I think main reason you don't see a lot of talk about these motors is that 2407 is a little bit of an oddball size. Like, it's a little too big for 5-inch, but it's a little too small for 7-inch. No views. Okay, no audio there. All right. Oh, what happened? Oh, that's interesting. Well, we're crashing, that's for sure. Um, so you've got a camera problem, okay? Like I can see, I can see here that your OSD, I can just barely see your OSD. I can see the horizon moving. Your camera has screwed up. Um, this is not a video transmitter. This is not a flight controller. This is a camera problem. Maybe a VTX problem. My gut, my gut would be on the camera. First thing I would do there, it's back once it hits the ground. First thing I would do is check the MIPI cable between the camera and the VTX. I would reseat that at both ends and I would inspect it for any sign of damage. I might even just replace it on principle. Basically, there's the only way to solve this if it's a hardware problem, the only way to solve it is to just start swapping parts and see what fixes it. 
There isn't really a, unless you can inspect and find physical damage, but oftentimes you can't. But this is a camera or, or can't, because like nothing else would cause the image to go dark in that exact way other than a camera problem. I think the cable would be my first, uh, my first thing I would check. If the camera, why is it also affecting the OSD? Asks Eric Ashner. Um, well, that's interesting. That's a good question. So here it looks like it completely powers down and is gone. I still think it could be a camera problem because the OSD is just manipulating the Luma signal in the camera. And if the camera fucked up the signal going into the OSD, I still think it could cause this. But I'm sorry, I said MIPI. This is analog. I got, uh, for, I don't know, this picture just looked so good, I thought it was HD0. So there's no MIPI cable. I still would inspect the cable, though, the video cable going from the camera to the VTX. Apologies for, uh, for getting that wrong. Yeah, I still think it's a it's a camera signal issue, uh, even though it affects the OSD. You can see OSD without a camera. That's right. You can. Um, if there's no signal at all, then the OSD will work. But if there's a messed up signal coming from the camera, it can mess everything up. James Reedy suggesting that it's a 2S camera on a 5 volt pad. I don't think there's very many uh, there's very many cameras that don't go down to 5 volts. Betaflight 4.5 Alt OSD flashes red at 100 feet. How to change to say 350? Thank you for a $5 super chat uh, from Adam Egg. Uh, believe it's I think I know where that is. That's going to be in the OSD tab over here on the right. And that's going to be the altitude limit right here under alarms, altitude. You change that number and that's where you change it. Altitude. Currently it's 100. You want to change that to 350. Easy peasy. 